we will come on to our next speakers from VMware, good old friends, uh, Ben Hale, as well as Lee Capilli, who many of you probably know, um, was in our team before. Hi, Ben. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, and Lee Capilli, that many of you know, who's on um, with us in our DX team on the WeWork side, and now, excitingly, has uh, joined Ben's team and others um, working on the Tanzu side. So I'll go to my formal um, introduction. So um, we're really excited that they're showing GitOps um, with VMware Tanzu. And Ben is senior staff engineer at VMware, my old haunt, it's great seeing you. And Lee is staff developer advocate. So Ben will go first, I believe, and Lee will show the rest of the product. So thanks both of you. Yeah, thank you, Tamao. It's been great to, uh, to see and work with you again after all these years. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, with the slides here. Uh, in my in my role, uh, it means all slides all the time uh, these days, <laughs> sadly. Um, so the title of the talk, GitOps with VMware Tanzu Application Platform. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, TAP, but I'm going to try and focus a little bit more on how we use Flux in sort of a novel way. Um, the, the change to sort of the, the GitOps toolkit kind of thinking has been really, really great for us. So my name's, uh, as I was introduced, my name's Ben Hale. I am the technical lead for the Tanzu application platform. Uh, it means that I am still, you know, an engineer at heart. And I think about things that engineers do and especially customers, application developers who need to build on top of Kubernetes. Lee, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Yeah, I love uh, being here with this community to speak. Uh, many of you might know me. My name is Lee Kapili. Uh, I now work with Ben and the Tanzu team. I'm a developer advocate for all things Tanzu related including the Tanzu Community Edition, freely licensed open source distro that we just released. Uh, you can experience like all of Tanzu and uh, yeah, we're doing cool things. Super excited to be talking a little bit about the Carvel tool set uh, and what we're doing with Tanzu application platform because we are building stuff and extending on top of Flux and that's a really cool place to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our product. I swear, uh, I'm not gonna try and sell you on it. Um, I'm sure I can find a salesperson who will do that if you really want it. But let's start with like sort of the base here. We sort of come to, uh, to Tanzu uh, by saying, we believe that Kubernetes is good. I look at this and I see a huge amount of opportunity, huge amount of flexibility, a huge, you know, sort of canvas for our teams or our customers to actually build great things. But I also see a lot of complexity here. Our customers see a lot of complexity here. How exactly do you select what you want to run out of here? You're an application developer. How much of this really matters to you? And how much is sort of incidental complexity that gets exposed to you? And so that's what we see. Like for all of the greatness that is Kubernetes, application developers, especially once you get beyond that really early um, uh, adopter phase, application developers realize that they're looking at hundreds of lines of YAML, what we affectionately call internally, um, a wall of YAML uh, that sort of impedes their ability to do what it is that they're there to do. Um, I come from a long background working with enterprise customers, especially. And for them, it's the question is like, I need to deliver a new piece of functionality for my insurance company or a new uh, way to evaluate car loans for my car company. What they're not there to do is make sure Kubernetes is tuned to the nth degree. That's like a real big problem for them. And really, and they, when they come at it, they, you know, the argument always is, this is impeding my ability to, uh, to, to deliver business value for my, my company. So what we've started work on is the Tanzu application platform. We had a couple of really big uh, beta announcements at Spring One and VMworld. We're looking at GA sometime in the new year for this. But the goal here is effectively to build an application aware platform on top of Kubernetes to say build the platform on top of the platform. The goal is basically to take really good developer outcomes. My history is from the CF side, although I don't work on it anymore, the Cloud Foundry side. And we've always gotten from our customers the Cloud Foundry's developer experience was absolutely top notch. Basically the gold standard for what a developer wants to do with their life while there were other problems with it. So what we wanna do is 
create a situation where while we still get all of Kubernetes, developers focus on their specific stuff, things that only an application developer can know about their workloads. Things such as what type of workload type is this? Is this a web workload type? Is it a batch workload type? Is it a streaming workload type? Where should someone go get my source code from? Here's a Git URL. We're gonna talk a little bit more about other places you might get it. What does it mean to bind to services with service claims? Say something like, um, uh, here is the database that I want. Here is exactly the database that I want. And I want to get events uh, from a RabbitMQ. And I don't really care which one, any one that will deliver me a thousand events you know, for, for me to connect to, something like that. Environment variables, resource limits, all of those things fall into there as well. But the key thing is this doesn't really describe what it means to actually run my application. It describes characteristics about my application. Operators though, we separate as a completely separate role. We realize that in many cases, especially in sort of DevOps kind of scenarios, you end up being both an application developer and an application operator. That's a good thing, I suspect, um, overall. But the key thing is when you think about the problem, we want a clean separation between those three things. We don't want what it means to describe my application and to work on application code towards business outcomes to get corrupted by what does it mean for this to run really, really well on Kubernetes. We see them as different skill sets, even if some people have both of them. So we, so sort of the spine of the Tanzu application platform, by no means the extent of the entirety of what it does, is an open source project run by VMware called Cartographer. Uh, and see here, uh, we managed to have a k sound without making it a K. <laughs> um, and so we have this thing called Cartographer. And what it effectively does is it's a choreographer. It introduces this idea of something called a supply chain. And so a supply chain watches for that workload YAML that you saw a little bit earlier, and it does something with that. It says, given this workload, I have a policy, a set of templates that I know what it means to run on Kubernetes properly. So we stamp out a Flux Git repository that knows how to watch that Git repository. We stamp out something for Tekton so that we know how to run your, your tests. We use a project called KPAC, which uses cloud native build packs, one, another CNCF project um, to turn your source into an image. We we do some VMware magic uh, that happens after that. That's the, the stuff that we're going to get paid for. And then eventually we sync this into something like Kubernetes. But one of the real key things here, is, and this is like one of the lessons I've learned over my career, is I think this is a really good combination. I think customers can have a huge amount of success doing something like this. But not all customers will do that. We need to make it possible to meet a customer where they are, for them to say, I have a different opinion than you. Instead of Tekton, what I actually want to use is Jenkins to run my tests. I want to be able to have a way in and a way out that kicks out to a, a, a thing that I already own. Maybe you aren't you know, invested in the idea of build packs. You've had bad experiences in the past or for whatever reason, you're, you're on Docker files. Okay, cool. And sub in Conoco into this supply chain, right? Now, the key thing here is to get that kind of composability, that kind of pluggability requires something very, very special. We care about duct types, right? Duct types for those who aren't, you know, sort of super familiar with them. This is effectively us saying, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. It's, a, it's the ability for us to say, I don't actually care whether you're using Tekton or Jenkins. What I do care about is that I hand you an input that's a piece of source code that you need to test and that you hand me out whether or not that source code passed. I don't need to know whether you're using Docker files or build packs to build your image. What I need to do is give you some source code and expect to come out a, a digest of a Docker image. And that's really important for a lot of things. But most importantly for us, is what happens when we want to sub out something like Git for something like Docker. And this sounds pretty crazy when you first think about it. Why would I need Docker here? That's an image. You're talking about where source code goes. But it turns out when we talk about what we call our inner loop supply, uh, supply chain usage, what we're actually describing here is saying, most of the time a developer is just doing this really tight loop locally on their machine, right? They're changing source code, they're testing if that source code works, changing source code, testing if it works long before that ever goes to Git. And so the key thing here for us is say, we need to get this source code off your machine and into a blob store somewhere. What's the best way for us to do that? What's the best blob store that a developer in the Kubernetes ecosystem likely has? It's Docker. So now then the question becomes, oh, 
how do I change that Git repository up at the beginning? Like, I know that there was an S3 bucket that we can use. There's some Helm stuff there. It's not immediately obvious, but it turns out that Flux cares about duct types as well because they introduced the artifact. All of the source uh, repository types, um, everything that's in the source controller specifically, kicks out a status that has this artifact. And it's really great. A URL that you can download things, the revision that it was related to, a checksum to make sure that you're getting the right stuff, some information about last update times. All of them have this thing, which means we can sub out anything because all we know is we're going to listen for changes to whatever the, the current artifact actually is. So we went off and did this. We did a good thing here. We went off and we I'm not sure, I, while we use the same name, I'm reasonably sure we didn't actually fork the source controller, but we followed the same process, right? We liked this artifact thing. We, uh, we built upon it both in the types that we have in our controller around image repositories, but we also built it into the way we consume things. We lean on that artifact duct type. As long as there is a status that artifact, which has a couple of things in it, we will be able to integrate with you. But we looked at this and we said, this is too important, right? Like this is a thing that's gonna be broader, much broader for, for other people um, than, than just for us. And we've used a lot, you know, we've gained a lot of utility from using Flux and building on top of Flux. But what's important is we actually want to send this upstream, right? And so I'm pleased to say, uh, as of 12 days ago, we have uh, na navigated our internal open source projects office, and we are actually contributing back to Flux. Draft PR, I know, like it's not, you know, I'm not claiming VMware is this huge uh, maintainer or anything, but it's been a really great experience. We've contributed what we learned there, changed the name slightly to OCI image, taking some feedback from the, the Flux maintainers about what we want to change, but really having a good discussion about what it means to get this in and what it means to work in the Flux ecosystem. And so before we go any further, I want to hand it off to Lee to give you a quick demo of how exactly this works and how we see it uh, in relation to the um, other source types. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, super excited to just show this working a little bit. So here is my screen share. Uh, again, you know, go ahead and check out that PR. It's PR450. Uh, on the source controller repository, not the Flux2 repo. Uh, so here I have a Kubernetes cluster. It's got a couple of components uh, that Ben is talking about. Uh, we have this command line tool that is able to keep track of groups of resources that are installed to the cluster called CAP. Uh, if you haven't played with CAP before and you struggle a little bit with trying to keep things in nice, neat groups on a Kubernetes cluster, um, then you can see like, okay, well, I have like groups of things. This is, these aren't Helm charts. They're not Helm releases. Uh, they're just blobs of Kubernetes resources that are all labeled together. And um, there's a couple of, you know, resources that I have built with my personal platform. And I want to start leveraging pieces of this. In particular, the platform component that does image builds from application source code uh, that we've worked on, it's pretty new. It builds on these cloud native build packs. It's called the K-Pack, right? So K-Pack, you put a custom resource into the cluster. It knows that it can use a builder to do builds of an image that comes from somewhere. And so how do we get the application source code into the cluster, right? That's that kind of question uh, that we thought, oh, well, we can use Flux's source controller for that. And so um, if you go and you check out Ben's PR, uh, PR450 on the source controller repo. You can build it, you can deploy it like I have, uh, and hopefully we'll be upstreaming that in the near future. Um, or well, on whatever schedule makes sense, um, because we've got some interesting conversations in that thread about typing and extensibility. Uh, really good stuff, always working with the Flux maintenance community. Now, um, I just in this kind of examples folder where I put a bunch of all kinds of stuff, uh, you can see it's very simple, uh, OCI image resource type, right? And uh, it starts out simple, but if you look into that API, just as you would with any Flux uh, resource, this is a source type API. So I'm doing a kubectl explain recursively on the OCI image custom resource, right? The whole API is kind of defined here. This is totally tentative, uh, but it's got that status sub resource and that duct type 
that Ben was talking about. This is the artifact, right? If I go and I look instead of at an OCI image, if I look at a bucket, um, this is a flux type uh, that has that same artifact duct type inside of the status that's useful uh, to be consumed by other controllers. And then you can see that, you know, uh, yeah, Git repository also implements that, right? So, okay, uh, we can see that I've got this Prometheus OCI image, right? I'm gonna put this source into the cluster, have Flux reconcile it. It's just sitting out on a public registry. Uh, so it's gonna be able to fetch that image for me. And we wanna see that we can reconcile it and make the source available inside of the cluster. Um, if you don't know anything about source controller, I'll kind of show you how that works. But uh, here we're grabbing the Prometheus package from the Hanzu Community Edition repository at a particular immutable SHA, right? The thing uh, that's nice about using a SHA instead of an image tag is that you know that uh, the thing that you're pointing to is never going to change, right? I have this exact package coming into my cluster uh, and you can see why that would have some useful properties, especially for continuous delivery and more of a production setting. So I go ahead and then just cook cuddle apply that Prometheus OCI image. Uh, you know, we get the normal kind of message back from the cluster. Uh, that says configured actually here. I'll, I'll be a little more honest. I guess I had that over there. We'll go ahead and delete that. All right. So if I get OCI images in the cluster across all namespaces, there's nothing there. And we apply our resource, then we check uh, Kubectl to see, and uh, we here we see that we've created that resource. It's called Prometheus, and it references this particular image. And then we see this status message from Source Controller that's saying, "Hey, oh, I went and did that thing for you." And then you can also look at the logs. I have Source Controller installed in a namespace called GitOps Toolkit. Uh, and we can see that it was performing a bunch of reconciliations you know, on that end as well. So just a little bit of observability there. And if we describe the resource, um, I want the OCI image and I'm just in the default namespace. Um, here's our normal status messages and things like that. And then here in status artifact, which is our duct type that we want to um, get our information from, we see that there's this URL subfield, right? So it tells me a little bit about the revision of what thing was pulled. Uh, a little bit of extra information here is that uh, we are resolving the container image. In this case, I gave it a SHA already. And so it's going to go find those layers and then cache them locally and pull them just once. Um, so the same sort of storage model that we have with Git repositories and any other artifact in Flux. And we grab this URL. And I'm going to open up a debug pod. So that would be, I want to create a debug pod. I'll just paste it off of the Alpine image. And we will get an interactive shell here. And I'm going to use wget to get a copy of that archive. Right? So what we see here is that uh, the source controller service in the GitOps toolkit namespace inside of my cluster, uh, I want to access the OCI image type that's served from that controller. Uh, and it's in the default namespace called Prometheus with this you know, particular tarball. And then I can uh, cat, uh, I will tar list that file. And you can see that there's the contents of that container image available over HTTP inside the cluster uh, via Flux me Flux's mechanisms. And so you can see how this would be useful for a couple of things, right? So uh, in this particular image package, uh, image package being a format that's supported via the Carvel tool set, um, the, there's a bunch of Kubernetes YAML files in here, and I'm actually going to unpack those here. So tar x v fip, the SHA-253. I'm going to kind of my auto here. Uh, 
this will just delete it again. One second, sorry, my friends. Grab this URL one more time. And go back into the exec here. Cool. Uh, I grabbed that at a different URL than the previous time, uh, which is actually interesting because it's available as both the latest tag and as this shop. So that's notable. Um, X ZBF and then I can just type correctly. There we go. So here in this config folder, you can see uh, that from this upstream directory, this has been nicely packaged by the uh, Tonsu Community Edition team. If I just go and look at like what's inside of Node Exporter, um, there's a bunch of normal Kubernetes uh, YAMLs. And so here's like a cluster role definition. Uh, but then you can also see, oh, that there's more esoteric things in here. Like if I go into this overlays folder, you'll, you'll find things that don't exactly look like a normal Kubernetes YAML. Uh, for instance, overlaying the node exporter here, uh, we see something that looks like it's got more source code that's inlaid into it. And um, if you, um, the Tanzu application platform is not prescriptive about like what tools you want to use. It's, it's pluggable and it's extensible, uh, but, uh, we started to build some good opinions around uh, overlaying and programmatically building up configuration, locking images with different tools. I'm going to go take a look at the Carvel tool set. Uh, in this case, what you're looking at is a structured template of a YTT program. Uh, so we can put all sorts of things inside of a image package, right? Uh, just kind of zooming out here, we were looking at this OCI image, we asked Flux to pull this OCI image into the cluster. It became available uh, without any sort of authentication, just over a private HTTP connection inside of the GitOps toolkit namespace that we deployed source controller to. And now we have that source code available to us uh, with the tar stream, you know, uh, nothing fancy, it's just old Unix tools. And we can pipe that to any number of things. So We've got source controller pulling in all of our source code from an image, and we could use customized controller to apply some of the YAMLs from the upstream directory. Similarly, we could build a controller that grabs all of that source code and does a YTT build on the program that was inside of the overlays folder. Similarly, we could actually have our application source code say we were building a Java Spring application or a Node.js app with a bunch of JavaScript. We could have all of that inside of the OCI image, push it up, you know, say it's a local image uh, from our local Docker registry as part of our development flow. And we could ask KPAC to turn it into a downstream Docker image of the application that's actually built and ready to run. And so there's a lot of really cool use cases here, right? It's, it's not just, using configuration inside of a repository uh, to configure the Kubernetes cluster, but we can also build application workloads and we can use other templating engines. Um, so future work here for sure. But um, yeah, that's a kind of what we wanted to demonstrate as far as the upstream work uh, functioning. Uh, ben, I have been so excited uh, to see your, your contributions and um, yeah, it's, it's really fun to work on the, the technical sides uh, of solving this continuous delivery problem, making things a little bit more extensible. But uh, did you have anything you wanted to add as far as consuming OCI images? Uh, no, that sounds really good. Like the, the next thing that I wanna say though, is like this turns out to be really easy. Um, 
I am continually impressed by the Flux maintainers and how that they've, they've made something that's this sort of composable that we, you know, just sort of went and did this novel thing. And it's been important enough to us, like the ease of use that we were able to do both take on something like just the Git repository, the way that we were able to sort of match up with the, the duct types that the source controller uh, uses to make sure that we could build an image equivalent of that. And from our perspective, this is just the beginning of our contributions. We really, really want to become more engaged in sort of the Flux uh, maintainer community, uh, you know, putting in as many upstream contributions as, as uh, the, the team will take for us, because we see just a huge amount of uh, uh, opportunity and power here. So if we go back to that supply chain, like the number one thing on our list that comes after, and admittedly, we have not talked to the, the Flux team, we're still sort of experimenting internally to figure out what this might look like, is if we sort of take this idea of this is what uh, you know our supply chain looks like, one of the things that becomes really apparent here is this is all on a single cluster effectively. You're maintaining a bunch of resources in a particular cluster and it's less of what you might refer to as true GitOps. But we do absolutely understand that like GitOps is a big thing. It's going to be a big thing for a lot of our customers and, and much, much of uh, thinking starts with the assumption that GitOps will be what our customers are doing. And so one of the big questions, one of the big areas we see as an opportunity here is what happens at the end of our supply chains? Right now we deploy straight to Kubernetes, but what if we wanted to deploy instead to Git, right? What happens if we want something else like Flux or, or you know, another GitOps tool sitting in another cluster, looking at a Git repository for the output? of what our supply chains do. And so we're starting to take a look at like the image update uh, automation area and like you can feel it, the, the parts are there. Like they're not quite what we need to do at the other end, but the, the foundation exists for us to start thinking about this end of it, um, using Flux at this end of our supply chains inside of the, the Tanzu application platform as well. So uh, if you do have any other questions um, about some of the stuff that we talked about here today, I'll make sure the slides are available with the links to those particular projects. And with that, uh, thank you from both Ben and Lee, uh, sorry, both me and Lee. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. Great. So we just have a few seconds here, uh, a few minutes. Uh, there's more of a comment, but uh, it was interesting to see someone in the Slack saying, I can see the OCI, uh, OCM image type being potentially useful for air gapped environments. Very cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. A lot of people uh, won't have access to you know, various Git repositories and replicating into uh, an image registry, especially as you start seeing the evolution from the Docker specification to the OCI image specification. Like you realize that they're very much thinking about it as here is a generic blob store with a nice API on top of it. And like you get a lot of interesting things from there. Lee, did you want to share something? Yeah, it was just, I needed to, um, to pull up the fact that you can use image package uh, to copy recursively bundles of things that are related to each other. And so uh, this is a potential use case where you would want an image package bundle with a bunch of all of your Kubernetes configs that you would normally apply to the cluster with GitOps. Uh, but an image package can also reference all of the software application images that are needed to actually run the application. And if you were using an OCI image as your control repository for your air-gapped cluster, uh, then you can do an image package copy and you can say that it is recursive and it will copy everything, uh, all of the application images that are related to the config uh, from whatever registry you have access to, to the registry that your cluster has access to. So uh, totally useful for that sort of use case, check out image package and the rest of the Carvel tool set. Yeah. Excellent. And I'm glad I learned about duct types. I've seen that in the email threads. <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out. Uh, as always, quality stuff, great stuff. Uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Lee. It's so great to see you and uh, really great seeing this. And yes, cartographer with a C, not a K. <laughs> so thanks for joining us. And we thank will you. move on to our next speaker.